Uh, good, evening, good, evening, good evening, everyone. It is, um, it is Thursday, November 9th, and this is the uh, Brookfield Select Board meeting. Please join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, as an announcement, this meeting is being recorded. Also, as a uh, notice, um, I have a, I am on call for work. I've made arrangements for someone to cover for me, but we were not able to get the phone tree changed. So I may get a call that I have to interrupt the meeting for a minute to say, yeah, no, you need to talk to this other guy. So I'm hoping that doesn't happen, but I just want to let people know that it could. All right. Uh, uh, let's see, uh, the agenda tonight is to interview candidates for the interim highway superintendent position. Um, our first candidate is Don Taft. Don, would you come up and join us, please? Get up so I can see the, above the top <laughs> of the table. Yeah, that chair was set very low. Yeah, it is. So, uh, let's see, it's been, it's been a while since I've interviewed anyone. I'm sorry? It's been a while since I've had to interview anyone. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I, I guess my, my question is, um, I guess I'll start with a question. Brad, do you, wanna, sure. do you, do you have questions you want to ask? Or? I do, but you can. Okay, I'll, 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 we'll take turns. It's like, um, they, um, what, what makes you think that you're a, a good fit for the position? I saw a need that the town had uh, at the highway department, and I'm just offering to help. And I thought that um, I might be of assistance. I have served as a superintendent in a number of different positions. Um, I ran a crew of 13 uh, and an operations and maintenance of uh, a wastewater treatment facility, not a highway department. Um, I have had some experience with design and construction of roads, road networks, and uh, just thought that if I could help the town in some way, I'd be willing to do that. All right, thank you. Brad? Mm -hmm. I guess if I were to ask one of my big questions is, so this is a 40 hour per week position, mm -hmm. I just read. Um, do you see yourself working with the current um, Abs absolutely. I mean, I've been down there a couple of times since the superintendent has left, uh, offered my services. Um, the crew down there seems to be functioning quite well. Um, I see that this position is preparedness. You need to be ready for winter uh, and whatever is coming down the road, as it were, as far as, you know, being ready for equipment and personnel and supplies and so on and so forth. So, yeah, this is just a case of getting through the next month, two months, who knows, uh, until you get a um, superintendent in place. Mm -hmm. Permanent. Right. I'm not looking for that job. I'm not qualified to do that job. I am offering to help if I can. So that's simply the way I see this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, um, my my understanding from the uh, from talking to the people that uh, that work on the crew is that the um, that there is an administrative side to the job and there is a hands-on side to the job. Yep. So um, the question the, the question I have for you, and I'll make this a two-part, is um, um, administratively, what do you bring to the table, and hands-on, what do you bring to the table? Let me say, I've run, I've run construction projects, I've run uh, operations and maintenance, uh, been a superintendent of a crew of 13, um, so I'm familiar with administrative, and that those were all hands-on positions as well. If I'm not a mechanic, could I fix a truck? Probably. I can help but I am not a mechanic. 
Uh, I haven't been a mechanic on a truck for 50 years, but um, I have done that. Uh, if they need, I, I said to the crew down there, call me if you need help. You want somebody to sweep the floor? I'll sweep the floor. You need a flagman? Call me. You know, I can go down and I can, I can help them, give them an extra pair of hands uh, as they may need in order to get through this transition period. Thank you. Right. What do you see as the biggest challenge with the highway department right now? Well, I think, I think just getting ready for winter. I mean, there's, you're not going to do any projects at this point unless it has to do with um, roadside drainage structures or catch basins or getting ready for that period of year when you're not going to be able to do any of that. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the biggest issues that I see is probably communications. You need to communicate with them, they need to communicate with uh, the residents, and if the residents have a problem, somebody needs to be there to uh, respond to the needs and, and situations for, you need to keep the roads safe, you need to keep the citizens safe, so somebody needs to be there. Uh, I would assume that you would want somebody on call 24-7, I'm guessing, I mean, I'm. Um, I think they're kind of, I mean, is that a part of the requirement for them to be 24 7 accessible? Typically, yes. Yeah. For emergencies. Right. That's not right. 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 Like, so right. People can call and no, say, yeah. hey, right. I've got a problem. Yeah. You know, but for emergencies, yeah. yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. You anticipated one of my questions. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my, my understanding is that the, um, the in the past, at least in the past, the highway superintendent has been. Um, um, on uh, been available to state police dispatch. Correct. It's like the, the uh, in like if road conditions are getting bad, they the state police can coordinate with mm -hmm. them. They can make sure that it's addressed. Or okay. Uh, and the existing crew down there is knows what they have to do and how to do it. I mean, they've been doing this for a long time. Um, I see no reason, you know, to change what they're doing. I mean. Obviously, this is an interim position. So any changes or, you know, whatever, that's down the road. That's nothing that I, the uh, interim person is going to make any. You have a crew of uh, two or three laborers, and you have a, a, a very capable staff person down there. Work with what you've got and make it, make it through until you get a full-time superintendent. Mm -hmm. What do you see as your uh, biggest challenge in succeeding in this role? I, I think the biggest challenge is safety, uh, is being sure that um, the, the crew is, you have sufficient staff to handle plows or salting. Um, again, I don't see any kind of major projects going on. Um, it's, it's being sure equipment is in a ready condition, that you have the people that are, you know, there to man it. You can have equipment and nobody to drive it, it doesn't do you any good. And you can have drivers and no equipment, it doesn't do you any good. So, Okay. So, so just balance it. I'm trying, I'm, trying to think of how, I'm trying to think of how that aligns with my the response aligns with my answer, so just give me a moment. All right. And then how have you, as a follow-up, how have you handled um, challenges uh, such as you uh, see the one here in past jobs? Uh, it's, a, it's a case of listening to uh, the people that are in, in the know. In other words, you've got the people down there that um, that have done this work on a regular basis, uh, talk with them and be sure that you're meeting the needs if they, what their needs are and what their support is. This is really a supportive role for the crew that's already there. Um, if they need communications to the selectmen or you know, to the town hall, and that's, that's a role that could be, uh, I could work on. Unfortunately, a lot of the questions I have, I already 
probably know what his answers are because I've seen the way he's worked. <laughs> so it makes it a little bit different. Well, you, so should, I, you should ask, ask both applicants the same questions. Yes, yes. So, so I think it would be appropriate for you to ask Don, even if you think you know the answer, and then that way we can, uh, that way I can benefit <coughs> from Don's answer if I don't, sure. if I haven't seen that in action, and then we can also ask that question of the other applicant. Sure. How would you describe your leadership style? Uh, well, that's a good question. <laughs> I, I guess I'm, um, um, I want to know what they know uh, and use what their knowledge to um, manage uh, what they do and, what, and match that to the goal that is in front of us, which is, as, as far as I see, is safety. And so you have to... Um, uh, focus on what your goal is and manage the, the personnel and the equipment to, to meet that goal. Um, I am basically non-confrontational. <laughs> I mean, I, there's, there's, no, uh, there's no objective here other than to help the crew that's down there. I do not have highway experience and that's, you know, that's obvious for what information I've provided. Mm -hmm. uh, it's more uh, supervisory administrative assistance. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, and let's see. So I would say give me an example <clears throat> of the uh, or tell me about the, uh, the toughest situation you ever came into, <clears throat> excuse me, and how you're able to, su to succeed in it? Well, I, I ran a crew on a super fun cleanup site uh, on a military base, and you're under uh, a tremendous amount of scrutiny uh, on the cleanup by uh, the military, by the residents in the area, by the um, the environmental issues that that um, were in the news constantly. Uh, you just have to maintain uh, your decorum and your uh, focus on what your project is and do your job. I mean, it's basically do your job. Uh, and um, it's that's the way it is. You just have to do your job. Mm -hmm. What do you envision your first? I'm sorry. What do you envision the first day on the job? What would it look like? For you? How would you assess? That? I would I'd probably sit down with each person individually and find out uh, more about them, what their strengths are, what their what their focus is, find out what their needs are, um, um, find out as much as I can about their daily operation. Probably set up some uh, schedule as far as um, plowing routines and, and uh, finding out who is responsible for what particular areas in town and being sure that those operators are still available uh, to, to handle the plowing or sanding or safety issues. Uh, I talked with Lindsay, and she, so initially when I went down the first day, um, Mike said that they had reached out and that they had sufficient plow drivers. And I said, have you spoken to them? And he said, not recently. I went down a couple of days later, and Lindsay had reached out to every one of the drivers and all committed that they were available. So, uh, that I mean, she... She's right on top of it, you know, so I, that was a, that was awesome uh, and so I don't anticipate that it is a problem. I did go out and get a my DOT medical so that if I need they needed a plow driver on a small truck in an emergency I would certainly do that or you know could do it like I say I haven't plowed roads in 40 years <laughs> Is that what the, uh, 
if you need to interview traditional candidates or anything? I guess you wouldn't. Actually. When you discuss this <coughs> at the other meeting, my understanding was the consensus was that depend, de de depending on how things line up, mm -hmm. that you may wait until the permanent <coughs> No, more like with the additional power drivers, not any So at power. the at the most recent department head meeting, we just said that they are they are fully yeah. stocked and that they got the last one that they needed uh, confirmed. Okay. And that was last week. That was when was the department meeting? It was last week, right? I, I was at the last department head meeting. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Think. And Lindsay That's my recollection. They stated they were. that they they have all the file necessary file drivers. So that, that's not accurate. The class B operators. Oh, well, that's, I'm just relaying what you yeah, said. Yeah, I thought I read that somewhere. They need class B operators, okay. and they are short two, two minimum, and they may be short three, but Ryan's position for a class B operator and Ronald's position for a class B operator need to be replaced ASAP. Okay. Now, Ernie Grimes, is Ernie Grimes is down there? He's not a B operator? They okay. Have all the operators they need, what your capabilities are, but they need class B operators. Okay. Is Mike a class B operator? Mike is. Mike, Mike, and Eric, and that's it. And can they both operate that wind plow? Yeah. One of them can, but okay. not both of them. And then they also need an operator with hydraulics licenses. The other, you need a hydraulics license because it's two loaders to Hoisting and hoisting and class B. Because it's over twenty-six thousand pounds, you need a class B license for the loader also. And would that be the insurance superintendents? So just to just to confirm with Don that he's able to drive a via any vehicle over ten thousand pounds, you need to have what's called a CDL medical check. I do. Correct. Yep. Thank you. And you have a bunch of one ton operators. That, mm -hmm. That's what you have to answer yeah. for. It's, right. Yeah, it's, it sounds like what they is that the 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 operate the plow I'll call them the plow only crew for want of a better term is that that Lindsay said they were fully stocked on um, operate smaller vehicles and that the um, the in house people it's like they're still we don't have people to. Uh, to fill those roles at the moment, Correct. specifically um, with um, Ryan and Don gone. Okay. So I think any permanent employee uh, hire should, I mean, if you need somebody for the wintertime for plowing, that's one thing. But if you're talking about a permanent employee, uh, my recommendation would be to wait until you get the regular superintendent in place and let him make the decision and, uh, that's my own personal thought. Yeah, that's it for us. So the You're not going to be able to wait until we get snow. That's no, no, no. You're going to be caught with pants snow. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just, I don't want to, I'll, I'll, I'll be quiet and say, oh, you don't want comments, but mm -hmm. I'll, I'll be quiet, but I'm stressing you're going to be caught with your pants snow if we get heavy snow without class B operators. They can't run the motors and they can't run the big trucks. Without additional cl class B operators. Additional, that's correct. Okay. And, and I think that's three because they had one part timer that I don't think came back. Yeah. Well, not part time, but winter helper. And that's something I feel like we should add to a future agenda to have a contingency plan to what happens if we get a storm mm -hmm. and hold up. For and, and that's the safety kind of safety issue that's at that's at hand. I mean, that's the kind of thing that you need to face and. Mm -hmm. Like I said, you can have the equipment and not operate, it doesn't do you any good. So that's. Mm -hmm. All right. And let's see. how do you prioritize tasks? Mm -hmm. 
come to you? Well, I'd like to see uh, some kind of a hotline uh, so that uh, residents can call in, whether it's uh, an emergency or what, you know, a pothole somewhere. Calls should be received and, re and logged in so that you know, you know, what is what people are concerned about or what hazards are out there and you address them um, as a safety issue and as the work, as needed. I mean, there's some things you're probably not gonna be able to do, but uh, the safety issues, certainly, you have to address those almost immediately. Uh, let's see, uh, tell me about a time you had to deal with a, uh, an irate uh, customer, with the understanding here of customer uh, well, I've never, I've had to deal with some pretty um, uh, tough construction situations you know, that end up being confrontational, and you just have to um, figure out what what is the issue, what the what is the best solution to come up with for um, for whatever the matter is at hand. So you. Uh, you can't be right or wrong. You have to do what's best for the program. Mm -hmm. uh, can, can you give me an example of how you, how you did that one time? Mm, well, I had a number of times where uh, working on a project where a, a contractor would uh, say that he had uh, completed work or supplied material uh, that either wasn't there or wasn't done properly. So you have to do an investigation, you know, uh, provide the, the documentation, the analysis of if it was a material that he said was delivered, then you get the, the invoices and you, you um, check the facts of, of, you know, what the presentation is. And then you come to an agreement or an understanding that either yes, you did and I made a mistake or no, you didn't and we're going to adjust that. That sounds more like a, a vendor issue. It was a, it was a well, the contractor issues. Uh, I mostly worked on construction projects, and, and uh, when I was operating my, my uh, uh, wastewater treatment plants, I was responsible to um, my program manager to the Air Force and then to the uh, EPA and DEP. So mm -hmm. they would, uh, the EPA would come in and make demands that you needed to do this and you needed to do that. And again, it's the situation, you know, is this real? Is it just something that I had them come in one day and they told me I had to shut one of my tanks down because it was off gassing a um, um, volatile organic compounds. So I said to the guy, well, what, what's, what's the problem? And he says, well, you've got to, we can't vent that. Well, I said, what's the solution? He says, well, you, we need a bladder on the top of that machine, that tank, so that it, I said, those readily available? Oh, I don't know if anybody makes them, he says, but that's what you need. <laughs> so, I mean, so then you get to solve the problem because, you know, what, what really was the issue? And so we ended up putting a, uh, a cleaner uh, a carbon filter on the exhaust stack. I mean, so you come up with a solution. Mm -hmm. um, on a daily routine basis, do you see working together with the other guys and handling projects one after another, or are you more apt to assign tasks for everyone to work independently different it kind of depends on what the what the task is. I mean, there if it's uh, maintenance on a vehicle and somebody has a specialty that they are more mechanically capable of, uh, over somebody else, uh, you would have them do the mechanical work. If, if it requires two people, you jump in and you get it done. If it's plowing and and you need staff and you need to be sure that coordinating uh, the efforts, then you're there plowing or coordinating the effort, so. So also there is gonna be downtime at certain times. What do you, what would your plans be for those downtime periods? 
uh, maintenance and equipment and, and preparation. Uh, like I said, unless you have, maybe you need to do some emergency pothole repair or drainage maintenance, the, the, you know, taking care of those projects that, that will help you get through the winter uh, with, little, with little damage or, or it's a safety issue. You know, if you've got to go and you have to uh, clean up the drainage swales along the side of the road, you need to do that before it freezes. So you take care of that and then you don't have to deal with it as, as an emergency situation once it freezes or snows. And so if you were to come into tasks where you were becoming overburdened, are you more apt to report that up to the select board that you guys are getting work down, or would you be more apt to just try to get through it? Well, I think you need to get through it as best you can. Uh, I mean, you've got very limited resources. Um, you know, you, you're down a, a superintendent, you're down a foreman, and you never hired another operator. Now, we do have, uh, they did bring in another operator to kind of fill in the gap part time anyway. So you're a very. It's, it's, there's only, Eric was the additional operator. There's no other operator. It's just a foreman and a highway superintendent. Okay. But they brought in Ernie Grimes, I think, to help. They did to help. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. And what about the things you going to say on for the interim superintendent, or is he being moved? Or? I have no idea. I would think that there's, well, there's still doubt and additional questions. Right. It makes sense if, if he's inclined to do that. I just didn't know how long, I mean, is he temporary? Is he working 40 hours? I don't think I don't think he's working 40 hours, but it might be a fund. It might be a funding issue that you're going to need to be sure that their funds are managed in such a way that you can keep them on if he so desires to continue working. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think that's, I think that's a orthogonal issue to the uh, to the interim superintendent. It's that, it's like, let's. I'm thinking, let's focus on filling the uh, the superintendent, and then we can say, okay, what do we what do we have for what do we have for staffing level? I mean, we've got we've got Ernie helping out now, and then is there a need for him to stay on based on the uh, the, the candidate that we uh, that we select and agrees to come on? Um, do you want to hear anything about Ernie? Um, I would say not right now. I I would I, Mr. Shaver, I would like to hear about this, but I don't think okay. it's relevant to the interview situation okay. here. So if you if you can see me afterwards, please. No, no, no. I'm not asking you to zip it, but I'm just saying it's like, I just want to keep this on task. Brad, do you have any more questions for Don? Because I think the end of my list. No. Okay. I don't know. I've watched him go through procurement. He knows what he's doing about it. Mm -hmm. uh, he knows how to work with other boards. Mm -hmm. So what would, you, what would you ask of us? Uh, what would you, what would you, what you, what, what questions do you have for us about the uh, the position, the expectations, and and how loud do we yell when we get really upset? Uh, I don't normally yell very loud. <laughs> no, no, no. How, but, how, how loud would we yell at you? When you get yeah. Upset? This is uh, <laughs> me. Uh, yeah, I would hope that that uh, the board would be responsive and and. Com and be willing to communicate about what the needs are and be responsive to whatever the needs are. I don't know what they are because I haven't been down there, but mm -hmm. I see uh, personnel uh, plow drivers as, a, as an issue. So that's, that's, I think, is the first thing that needs to be addressed um, to be sure that, um, and if it, doesn't, if it doesn't work, we need to come up with a solution. And I don't know whether that solution uh, right now is hiring, you know, private contractors. I don't know. I don't know what the answers are because I haven't been down there. Mm -hmm. um, but, but yes, and I'm assuming that, um, you know, you're, you will continue to um, reach out to fill the position on a permanent basis and that uh, um, that's going to take a while. 
I hope it doesn't take too long. I, you know, I would hope that you can fill it with a very qualified candidate very soon, but who knows? Mm -hmm. So. How, how often would you like to interact with the select board if you had that decision? If you had that decision? Well, I, I'm at the most of the select board meetings um, on a regular basis. Uh, I mean, if you're looking for an update or need information or have a request, uh, maybe it could be a running um, uh, item on your agenda so that we could talk and resolve uh, some of the issues that are at hand. Uh, it, uh, Kelly is available, so uh, mm -hmm. I would say a regular basis. I think that's, I think your communications with the staff that's down there um, is a critical part of knowing what they need, knowing what's ahead of them, uh, knowing that, we're, that they're fulfilling your needs and expectations as well as, you know, just keeping the, uh, the public safe. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, it's, uh, my, my, atti my attitude is that I'm, I'm looking for a highway superintendent who can keep the roads safe. Yep. And keep them clear. So it's like when the snow when the snow falls, that they rally the troops and get the get the roads clear. If a tree if a tree falls in the middle of the night and the road needs to be clear, that they can rally the troops and get them out there. It's like I I remember it was uh it was right around it was right after Ryan left. I think it was the week after he left. And on Molasses Hill Road, big tree came down right on the power lines. Took the power out. It's like I saw the national grid truck there sitting there, and I so I went up to him and I asked. Him, it's like, it's like, you, you guys got what you need. He said, Yeah, the tree crew's coming. It's like I said, so you're gonna be able to do it yourself. It's like they can, about 80, 90 percent of the time they can do it themselves. Sometimes they, they'll need help from the highway department. And I said, Okay, well I'll be back just to check because I knew that since Ryan wasn't around, it's like we would, I would need to facilitate that discussion. Yep. And by the time I got back up there, they were all gone. I walked back to my house and the power was back on. <laughs> so I was very, I was very happy that, that it worked out. But fundamentally, it's like, just there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. Like, like any department, it's like if you're not there, you don't see what happens. And and while I'm, and part of me says, well, I'm interested to learn how it works. And part of me says. But I also like it to work really smoothly, so I don't have to learn how it works. It's oh, just that, so that the magic, the magic keeps happening behind the curtain, and it's like, but but I'm, but since I'm on the select board, I can't, I don't have that luxury of just saying, well, I'm going to hope it works. Yeah. But I mean, fundamentally, my expectation is to um, is to manage is is I see this as a caretaker position, to take care of the roads and take care of the department um, until a permanent. Until a permanent, right. a, person, a permanent person can be found to fill the role. And if you have somebody that has that highway background or that highway experience to fill that in from, that that's, would be a big benefit. But um, again, I'm offering to help if, if you need it. Mm -hmm. no, and, and thank you, Don. I know you're committed to the town and that you're, yep. and that, that you are, and that I, I feel that you're offering, that you, you're offering because you want to make sure that we're that there that we have options and that right. that we can that we're not left hanging. Exactly. Exactly. Anything else, Brad? Yeah. All right. Anything? Any other questions for us? Anything you want to know? No. Um, I really don't. All right. If if I if you need help, great. You know, and if you find somebody that can that has the experience and can do it and step right in and has all of that background, awesome. All right. So. Thank you, Don. All right. All right. Um, uh, given that the next candidate is due at 7 o'clock, I am going to... Oh, okay. Gary, you out there? Thank you. All right, thank you, Don. Hi, Gary.
You ready to go? Does it matter which side? I don't. I know you have this. Um, I don't have a Well, thank you for seeing me tonight. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, let's see. And uh, just just as introductions, uh, I'm Tom Regan. I'm currently the chair of Select Board, mm -hmm. and this is uh, Brad Kadelsky. He's Vice chair. Yeah, vice chair, that's right. Because Beth is the partner, Beth is not here. So, all right, so uh, let's see. So, my, uh, the intention is uh, I was going to, we were going to run this in the, uh, we're going to ask you some questions, give you a chance to ask us some questions. Um, the plan is that we are, um, we are not intended to make a uh, final decision tonight. Okay. It's like, so just, to, just so you understand, sure. that's like, we may take advantage of the open session to talk about it some. Um, and then my thought is, is that our next scheduled meeting is next Thursday. And so my expectation is that we'll, we'll have it on the agenda for next Thursday and I'm hopeful we'll be able to uh, okay. make a decision by then and, sure. and decide how we're gonna move forward that. Okay, okay. great. Uh, let's see, so. So, um, so I'm gonna start off with the, uh, the question on uh, what, uh, let's see. What do you see as your uh, your fit for the position? My fit is I've lived in this area for uh, a number of years. Um, really, I've I've admired the work that Brookfield has done. As a matter of fact, way back when Howie was uh, here, I I mirrored your DPW facility and built one just like it in Sherburn. Um, I know the area well. I've had family, still have family living in the area. Um, Brookfield is uh, a, a nice quaint. New England town, and I always have liked what I've seen. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, I, I guess I would say uh, more, more on an experience basis. It's, on my experience? Yeah, on your experience. Uh, boy, that's, that's all I've done. Uh, my Pretty much my entire life has worked for public service. Uh, my biggest um, stint, if you will, was I was uh, on the Mass Turnpike Authority mm -hmm. when I was the authority for 25 years. Um, leaving there with the title of Director of Maintenance Operations. Mm -hmm. I then entered the world of municipalities. Uh, I actually became more involved in every aspect of the work to be done, uh, be it bidding, um, grants, road work, um, construction. I've been an equipment operator. I ran a dozer for um, a number of years, probably half of my term on the turnpike. So I am um, an established equipment operator, I'll say. Probably not the best. We all learn something new every day, but <clears throat> I always enjoyed it, and I've always enjoyed the outside world, the outside work. I'm, I really, uh, I like people, and I like to fill, the, fill their, uh, their needs and take care of what they need. All right, thank you. Yeah, this thing, this thing. We are currently for licenses. I have a, a CDLA, yeah. doubles, triples, uh, passenger transport. I have hoisting 2A. I have not, when you say licenses, I assume you mean just the operator's license because I do right. have, I have an yeah, LTC. Yeah. Um, I did have a crane license. I let it go because I never used it. So yeah. I had a 1A crane. Uh, can you help me understand? I'm not familiar with all the hoisting licenses. What is a 2A hoisting license? 2A is for um, excavator, uh, backhoe, mm -hmm. uh, front end loader, obviously. So, yeah. Comfortable operating on it. I am. I am. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. And let's see. Now, um, the, uh, the, my, the, the position is um, it has some, it has administrative dimension and it has a hands on dimension. The, um, it's, it's not, it's not, an, it's not, it's not expected to be an office position, an entirely supervision. So, um, I, so, I guess I would say from your from your hands-on experience, I mean, you've got your you say you get your CDLA, which means you can drive it. anything. Anything, yeah, yeah. Tra semi semi trailer. Right. It's like that's up to the semi trailer. Also, okay. uh, yeah, doubles and triples as well. So yeah, okay. And then you get your hoisting. Um, and then, um, what about your experience as, as a mechanic? 
A mechanic, um, I've always considered myself, a, in my own personal life, a backyard mechanic, but I have jumped in and worked on heavy seal and, and with the fleet. Be it anything from tires, oil changes, greases, um, conveyor situations, spinners, so. I like hands-on, I guess is, is what I like to say. I like to, I like to jump in the hole um, with the guys to get the work done. Um, so, anyway. And so I see from your resume, you worked in this role before. What do you think's worked well and what hasn't worked well? Personally or with the position? Personally. <laughs> okay, well, I got gotcha. you. I just said it's a good question. Um, I guess what has worked well for me is I, um, I do enjoy it. I mean, I love the work I've done. I, I love where I've been, um, where I have been most recently, certainly. Um, hmm. That's a very good question. What hasn't worked? Did you part of that? What hasn't worked well? Yeah. I think um, maybe Kelly will understand this. What was my toughest part, uh, transition-wise, was going from an interim town administrator uh, back to uh, DPW or utilities and facilities in the town of Spencer. Did you live right after Ron's? Yes. Yeah, Ron's in Westbrookfield now. Yeah, I went and visited him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was um, actually a great experience. I've always told everybody on um, my upbringing, my career, that there's one job that I'd never want to be or have, and that would be the TA. Uh, but I jumped in there <clears throat> at a very critical time in, in the town of Rutland. Yeah. Um, and I, I guess that's probably yeah, that's the, the biggest feather in my cap. Um, never alone. We did it as a team, but we successfully had the two and a half override passed uh, because it was, it was that bad. There was no more... There was no more reserve fund. There was no more free cash. So the stabilization they didn't want to touch. So it was tough. So working um, with fellow department heads as a TA and back when I was uh, only a, a dep on, I say only a department head, but I, um, that was uh, probably the best thing I've done that I really felt good about. Because I told them from the get-go, in the beginning, that all I wanted to get Rutland through was a successful budget season. And as you know, with the the school budgets, um, Wachusa Regional came out at 1.6 million more. Um, so it was tough, but, but we did it. We did it collectively, so. I don't so know what to answer. You, you're with budget, I am, the, um, and that was different for me because as you know, you're taking care of the whole town. Yeah, it's yeah, a whole yeah, town's budget. Yeah. So the budget um, goes from the TA's office to the finance committee, <clears throat> and then to the selectmen for joint approvals and so on and so forth. So, yeah, I've always taken care of my own DPW budget. Um, so, I always watch, I don't know, if Brookfield prints the expenditure reports and the percentages of funds that you have spent and what you have left to get you through the year, the fiscal. Um, but I always pay very close attention to that. Mm -hmm. Our accountant says, sends those out every two weeks. Okay. Is a full-time accountant in Brookfield? We have an outsourced accountant. Oh, okay. She is, um, she is here on site um, once, a week. once a week, thank you, as I can, and available remotely other times. Okay, we had the same in, in Rutland, we had the same was in Was it Eric Insurance Company? It was, uh, in the, the person? Was no, the, the company is, is Eric Insurance Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, okay. Yeah, and he has multiple employees that work for him, okay. so he, he does numerous accounts, but not all, it's not all one person that does every single Okay, we had, I think um, she was in for 10 hours a week, mm -hmm. our accountant, so, and then she did a very good job. She's actually a local girl, so you, I'm sure you might even know her if I mentioned her name, but. Mm -hmm. What do you think the biggest challenge is in a role like this, that it's seeming that it's seemingly short term? <laughs> the biggest challenge in uh, any, um, you call it, I believe, the highway department, not the Department of Public yeah. Works, but it's the same to me. Um, is to take care of the needs of the residents. It's, it's safety first. So I make sure that I always um, answer all complaints, no matter how mundane they seem to be. Um, I take care of them personally. Um, but it's always a challenge, as I'm sure you gentlemen know, to keep folks happy. So you gotta be, you gotta be, you gotta be out there. You gotta be on the street. You gotta let people see you and, and not be afraid to talk to them. Can you give me an example of um, when you had a, a, a an irate um, resident and how you um, how you resolve the uh, the matter with them? Well, the first thing, and anyone being irate, is to just try to calm the situation down. Um, people have to know that you're there to listen and to help. 
So it doesn't help to be confrontational. It doesn't help to return the irateness, if you will. So it's just a matter of listening. Let him, let that whatever's on his or her chest to get it off his or her chest. I visit the site with the person, calm them down, and do the best I can for them. It says you're still in Rutland. Excuse me? It says that you're still in Rutland, and, and that you've been in Rutland since... Of yeah, you look at my. In you look, you know, I noticed that tonight because it still says present. <laughs> that's <laughs> so. right. That's why I'm asking: Are you going to be doing two jobs? Or no, 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 no. I uh, retired in Rutland as the DPW super in '18, okay. and then I went to West Boylston as the interim director of public works okay, this for is three years. Yeah. It looked like you were doing both jobs right. at the same no, time. No, so that's no. why. I'm asking. is the biggest challenge for the uh, successful candidate to succeed in this position as interim superintendent? This, <clears throat> this time of year, uh, obviously the seasonal challenge uh, because we have to make sure that everything's ready for winter. We've got to make sure that the uh, contractors are in place, the equipment, the fleet's good. Um, I don't know if, um, if you go with the uh, state contract or the consortium as far as salt and sand purchases. To, but to make sure that the supplies um, are certainly there and the staff is good and everything is safe and operable. Hmm. For any other time for the rest of the year, I should say, um, because there's always challenges, um, but it's always, uh, first and foremost, is safety first. Um, so I want somebody to go home uh, as safe as they did um, were when they came in in the morning. So I make sure that I go through things. I've, I've been through it all, so I, like, I, I love employees. I talk to them, I go through things. They've got issues, problems. Um, that's what we're here for. Mm -hmm. How do you prioritize tasks when they come at you? you know, I like to be, um, you say when they come at you, I like to be uh, proactive. But as you know, there's always reactive situations that have to be taken care of. Um, so that's the first thing to take care of, something that really needs to be done on, on the part of uh, reactivity, if you will. But I like to plan and schedule um, for the, you know, the, the work that has to be done, the um, asphalt maintenance, the, uh, the shoulder work, the structures, things that have to be done to, to have a, um, a safe network. How do you envision managing downtime so when there might be not a project or the weather might not be that great? Honestly, to me, there is, um, there's never downtime. There may be an easier time, but um, it's always, you know, okay, let's, let's clean this place up. Let's get these trucks done. Let's make sure that our, our, our catch bases are, are clear uh, in case an event comes through. But there's always, and I'm not trying to say that in a bad way, but to me, there's yeah. never downtime. There's always something that has to be done or looked yeah. at or, or, or planned. Yeah. Yeah. My, my downtime is when, the, uh, is when all the urgent things are away. And then you, can, then you can take care of the lesser. Yeah, things. the reg the regular maintenance, right? So. <clears throat> All right, and sorry, we're out of order. So. That's all. No. That's all. And, and so, on a, on a daily basis, are you the type of person that wants to go out as a whole crew to do different tasks together, or do you see yourself assigning tasks to different people and then catching up at the end of the day? I like to be able to send multiple crews out a day. Um, obviously, in some situations, that's not possible because everybody right. has to jump in. But that's right. what I like to do, so everybody's productive, myself included. So, what's your leadership style? Would you say? I'm a miserable, mean old. <laughs> no, I. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to say something as foolish as I was born to lead because that's not true. But uh, I've learned, I've learned coming up through the ranks. Um, I think we always look at something when we're young and say, um, I can do better. Mm -hmm. I followed that route uh, because I've been there. I've been in the trenches. I was the bottom man. So I, I, know, I, I, I do look at things probably differently. Um, but I think uh, my leadership is um, fair, firm, and consistent. Granted, you don't probably know our highway guys, so it might be a difficult question, but how do you envision 
what do you envision doing to make it easier for a permanent hire to come into place? Well, to make it easier is that they have to understand that um, I respect them before they respect me. I always give respect. I appreciate input. A lot of people may have different ideas of how I things done. And there's always a new way, a different way, a better way to do things. Um, so just to have them part of the process um, is very important. Right. Can you give me an example of um, one of the uh, toughest situations you had when managing a team and how did you handle it? I think a uh, tough situation that we all face is when we have, for some reason or another, uh, nothing specific, um, a disgruntled that's on the, on the crew. Uh, be it something's wrong at home, just one of those days, if you will. Um, I've had people that have said, once the job assignment is given, I don't want to do that. I'm taking sick time. I said, your assignment is such, you will not take sick time, and if you choose not to do the work, then you'll go home without pay. Um, so, and I think that's the fair way to do it because we can't have, we can't, in this, in this world, uh, in this um, line of work, if you will, we can't pick and choose. Those things have to be done. Uh, no matter how dirty, no how gritty, things have to be done and we all have to jump in and do it together. So you, did bigger, you did a bigger pad, sir, like I have. Yeah. Always have I my know, yellow pad. I know. It's like, I have so many big pads. Of paper. Yeah. They, they follow me. I leave you behind like breadcrumbs. It's just like, them and pens. Yeah. So you've probably been through these interviews before. Is there something that we haven't asked that you think you ought to share with us? No, they're all, they're all um, so different. You've really asked what, um, what I've done in, in good, what I felt that was good in my career. Um, certainly I've made mistakes. I think we all have, we admit it. I like to say that I've learned from them. Uh, certainly try never to make the same mistake twice, not purposely. Um, um, as far as, it's been honestly such a long time since I've been in an interview. The last three interim positions I, I've had, I didn't interview. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a crazy market out there, as you know. And, um, you, you can't find people anymore. I'm not saying, you know, I'm, I'm the person that you found. Well, I see how long we work as interim superintendents probably before they even fill the position. <laughs> yeah, so, so and that, was a, that was a tough time because I was during COVID. <clears throat> yeah. And they told me I'd be there for three months and I was there for three years. Yeah. So we had a lot to do, a lot to go through. Um, do you have a time limit if you were chosen on how long you would want to hold the position? I, um, I consider myself young and healthy. Um, I'm not, but I'm, I'm healthy. I still consider myself young. Um, I, I did talk, and your staff, by the way, was very helpful in the office. I just happened to stop in last week. She's been very helpful. Um, I would hold the position until you found a permanent replacement. Now you must know, um, Kelly, I'm sure you know that uh, I am retired, so my hours are limited to what I can work. It, no, it used to be a 960. That was up to 12. Oh, is it? It oh, is up to 12. Good. And I did hear, although I haven't confirmed, that once you reach a certain age, that doesn't come into play anymore. Okay. So you would be limited to working for us, for working 1,200 hours for the town of Brookfield in the fiscal year or the calendar year? Calendar year. year. Strictly calendar, calendar year. Calendar year. I've always considered myself in this field at 24-7. I mean, there's a lot of work that we always do, and I don't, I'm not, you know, I have no complaints about it, equips that, that we do for, for nothing, because you'll find myself anyway to be a loyal, faithful dog. I like what I do. I like to serve people. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then just doing some quick math, 1,200 hour limit comes in around 24 hours a week 24, for right. 50, or in a 52 week year. Correct. I mean, not quite there, but. Correct. Okay. I just want to make. I just want to, if if that's a if that's a if that's a limitation that you have on taking the position, I just want to make sure that I mm -hmm. understand. I, I, I internalize it correctly. Understood. Yep, that's correct. Okay. I think I've asked all my questions. Brad, do you have any questions at this point? How many do you have left this year? I have three hundred. I was ready for that one, Kelly. 
You have 300 left this year. For this year, for the for the next two months. That's oh, what. Oh, that's right. We're still. We're, okay. Yeah. You 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 scared me for a moment because I was thinking no. we had 300 hours for all of next year. Oh no no. And no, no, it was no, just no. like and gotcha. it's just like no no I misunderstood. Gotcha so, gotcha. So. However, and however, if it's true, if it's I don't know if you know Kelly, if it's been um, confirmed or substantiated that you there's no limit once you re reach a certain age. I've never heard that, but I will find okay. out. Okay, okay. That doesn't mean it's not real. We don't have to talk about what that age is. Not at this time, sir. <laughs> not at this time. And how do you envision working? With the select board, or what can the select board do to support? How mean are you? Not mean. <laughs> I, I'm, I enjoy it. You know, I've always worked well with select boards. Uh, when I was first in, in Rutland, as a matter of fact, at DPW Super, we didn't have a TA. So I reported directly to the select board. Um, and I, I enjoy interaction. Uh, select board, have um, you've got your constituents, I'm sure, that, that call you and look for this and that and the other thing to be done. And I get it. I've been there, I've done that. so. As long as you can, you know, flip your, your little pad enough to see what I have to do, then we're okay. <laughs> I'm, happy, I'm happy to make you comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Brad, do you have any more questions? Because if not, I was going to ask Gary what he would like to uh, what he would like to learn about the position and about us. Because I, I always see these things as, as it's both sides have to say that the, that the that the fit is right and that they they like what they see. Understood. And so it's like so we've been asking you questions. So now it's your turn to ask us about what we're like. What do you like? What do, what do we like? How long have you been on? on it, depend, it, depend, it depends on who you yeah, talk to. Understood. Oh, I know that. <laughs> Believe me, I know that. Actually, I was I was elected to this. Brad and I were both elected one year ago. Okay. Exactly one year ago, because Facebook reminded me that I put a post up on Facebook saying, "Thanks, Brookfield. Now for the work of make, helping make the town even better." And so I was like, I said, "Oh yeah, I have been on this board here." And then I became. Uh, we have a rotating chair system. Yes. yes. And I, I rotated in at the end of June after mm -hmm. town meeting. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I've, I've been chair for four or five months. Kelly, though, does seem like that. <laughs> yeah. The last. The last. Four months as chair, probably six, three longest years of your life. <laughs> it's like I had no idea how much stuff went to went to Beth when she was chair. Do you have um, a problem with contacting department heads direct, or do you have the policy that every go everything goes through Kelly? Um, let's see. I have a. I I I'm an agnostic. Um, my understanding is that uh, I would let. let I would ask Kelly to uh, answer that since that involves first time. There is no formal <coughs> policy. Okay. We're first time administrators, so it's been a learning curve for everybody okay. um, as to what fits for Brookfield. It is different in every town. Yeah. I've been doing this for 30 some odd years. Um, not town administration, that's only been. Mm -hmm. But, not, I'm um, not asking as an objection to that um, I, because I enjoy working so with, with appointed everyone. people have typically come to me and if, if it's a matter that uh, that needs to go to the board, which I kick it up the chain very readily if, if it's something that they need to, to discuss. Um, if it's small things, if it's uh, procedures, if it's if it's more technical need of a more technical nature, then we can usually resolve it depending on okay. what, what the matter is. Elected officials are elected officials. We have no jurisdiction um, over them. Maybe we could change that. So unless you change the elected positions yeah, no. to appointed, that's, <laughs> that's the way the law works. It's I know I did. I saw that. And I'm, um, I'm perfectly okay with that. And going through your warrant. For your last ATM, I saw that you were changing two positions or attempting to change two positions from elected to appointed. Did that happen? No, that was for citizen initiatives, and um, they they were not voted in the appointment. Okay, okay, that's it's happening in a lot of places. Mm -hmm. um, it happened in Rutland. I, they're I, still I trying know to do the, it. The impetus behind it was to grandfather in the common employees in that. Yeah. In that right. 
so that if they needed to relocate, we could retain them, or if they chose to retire at some point, then we would be able to put the jobs out to get mm -hmm. qualified okay. applicants. Right. Place them just for people who haven't placed up very good skills. Okay. okay. Um, but the town didn't want to give up the Understood. option of being able to elect. Okay. Um, another thing in browsing through the ATM warrants, I noticed, I think, unless I missed something, that there was no deficit spending in the snow and ice? So we, we fund the snow and ice. So if you wanted to see deficit spending, you'd actually have to go to look at the recap sheets. Did you check out the recap sheets? I just looked at, I looked at everything on your, actually I looked at it, I was studying it online to see what I could find, and I was very, I, I noticed that a lot of towns have different amounts of obviously for snow and ice. Um, mm -hmm. And it always seems like there's Last something. Last winter there were several events, but there weren't any um, major storms. Yeah. There were mostly ice, so yeah. we didn't actually go into the supply chain issue. And the, um, we didn't have we didn't have the same number of hours that we would in a, in a, a heavy snow event. Right. Generally, there were multiple events, but yeah. there weren't actual snow. I think that uh, when it's uh, strictly ice, it's more it's more consumption of material as opposed to hours. Correct. Because it's just all, sometimes it's a constant. So, mm -hmm. are you hoping for the big ones this year? I am because I well, love snow. I'm a big fan of snow, but I'm also a well kept aquarium fish. I work in a building that's climate controlled, so it's not really a problem. Yeah. Okay. I'm very fortunate that I have a lot of snow and ice in the summertime. Are you strictly um, sand salt mixed town or salt town? Um, I believe we're sand salt mixed. No, I, I believe we're salt. Mr. Chafee is so, one of our, our farmers. Well, no. This, this salt and sand, we mostly went to salt, but there were areas that we did sand. But, um, so he has both in the, in the Quonset hut down there, but predominantly. Which was a nice addition, I, I like seeing Predominantly, that. but, you know, the one issue that I constantly have, and you probably know this as, a, as working for the Mass Pike, Who's most that? of the wells along the Mass Pike that are private, contaminated by the pipe. I actually own a house in Bloomfield with a well that's contaminated. How are you going to handle limiting the salt so we don't pollute our water supply here in town? Because the town's aquifer is on Claybox Street, is where we get our water. How are you going to handle keeping our drinking water? Because yeah, salt is one of the only elements we can't take out of the water through a sand filter process, right? So it has to be done by reverse. Right, and it's process. a tough one. I've seen it when I was on the pike, actually. I've yeah. seen it happen many times. It yeah. So how would you help Brookfield? Oh, that's actually, it's, well, to me, it's always been, actually, it's a reduction in salt use. Because to me, it's always been, my, my methodology, if you will, it's, it's not how much you use, it's when you use it, which is very important. So in Rutland, we, we reduce the amount of salt um, dramatically. And I would literally reason. watch the highway boss put, pre, not the last one, but the one before, put salt out and immediately go plow it off, salt again, plow it off, and keep doing that process over and over. No, that's not the right way to, in my eyes, that's not the okay. right way to do it. No, there's always special circumstances. Every event is different. Um, calibration on your trucks and on your spreaders is very important. The last boss put all calibrations on it so that he could limit it. He did a really good job, but the old boss didn't like the way he was doing it. Constantly complained that he wasn't getting the roads clean enough, quick enough, because he was using less salt. But that is a big consideration because once you pollute our well, water, we're done, right? And then it's very costly. And not many people, unless you have a bad well, you don't really know about this situation. Right. Oh, you're, you're absolutely right. We had to replace a couple of them in Rutland because uh, years back, um, um, some people were just crazy. The old turnpike authority was absolutely horrendous. And all well, that being well honest. Yeah. yeah. And I there would, are some I horror stories out a, there. To a certain extent, that would be the, um, it would be the responsibility of the select board to, um, to work with the highway superintendent to understand what the plans were and then to provide the political cover, if you will, of, okay, this is, we have, we as a town decide to do it. This is why we're doing it this way. And it's like, and as a select board, we could say, no, we need more salt down. It's like, or we could say, we back up on the decision. It's like, th this sounds like a technical decision, so I'm not gonna, I'm gonna say, I could go either way. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. it, it would be the, but in, in that situation, it would be the responsibility of the select board to say, we have consulted, and as the elected authority, this is our decision, and this is what we've instructed the highway department to do. It's like, and therefore, because this this verges on the political, and I would say that I don't, 
there, there's there's always the interpersonal politics of mm -hmm. any position, especially of highway superintendent. But in general, the, the, the higher level politics of that and, and the policy decisions, I see that as the select board responsibility of owning that and working with the highway superintendent and saying, this is the political will of the town as decided by us. We answer to the voters. We're, we're going to do it this way. And, and I'm not saying we're, and when I say that, it's, it sounds like I'm saying we're going to make you do something. And I guess fundamentally we do have that power, mm -hmm. but okay. I'm, personally I am, I am a consultative person, sometimes to a fault, as Kelly will tell me as the way I run my meetings. Now, way back when, I don't know if you knew this, but on um, Interstate uh, 190, they built actually a series of very big retention to pension ponds for salt, to filter the salt, to keep the salt in the bins. Still, there's always something that gets through. I'll, I'll give you that. I agree with that 100%. And, and the common, the common, um, it's not a denominator, but the common battle for that salt versus sand use is the amount of money because sand does just as much harm to the environment as salt does. And More then you have the expense of cleaning it up, yeah. especially yeah. now with yeah. the stormwater regulations in yeah. play. Gary, can we, can we pull it back uh, from the technical merits of salt versus sand? Oh, sure, sure, sure. It's, like, it's, like, it's like, no, no, it's like, it's like no, I'm, I am so easily okay. fascinated by like, ooh, shiny discussion. Okay. But, but it's like, so, and it's, uh, it's something discussed, but I would like to um, the, the respect the Kelly and, and Brad's time and no, that's fine. The question, the subject was brought up. The question was asked. No, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Sorry. I mean, I you guys are talking about this is stuff that you guys know a lot more about than I do. Okay, understood. And so, and so, but so, what other what other questions might you have, or do you have? Well, I'd like to know um, union shop. No. No. How many employees? There should be a, an administrative assistant. She is awesome. Um, you have a crew, should have a crew of three full-time employees. Right now, we're down a foreman, and we have a temporary seasonal person filling in to make up the man hours, and, and they've all actually been doing really great in stepping up. Okay. Uh, the cover the extra. Okay. The extra load from losing two people. But it's, it's actually a four full-time working crew, including foreman and highway super. Including the super, okay. All right. Um, and I also saw in your in your articles that you allotted, I believe, if memory serves me correctly, nine thousand dollars for the maintenance of privates. No, twenty five hundred dollars. Uh, there's a bylaw provision for the temporary repair of private ways. They have to meet a certain criteria. There's a process for it. It has to be funded. Um, it hasn't been funded in the past. There is a um, there was nine thousand dollars for one. Okay, maybe, okay, you're right, and I saw that, okay. $2,500 I apologize. For, um, $2,500 for the purchase of gravel to repair. And you don't have your own, you don't have your own grader to do that, correct? Do you hire out or you just do it with a front end loader? Yeah. You have a grader, okay, okay. Um, can I ask how many miles of privates you have? I do not know that. Most of them are all paid, so the privates, they pretty much just plow yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. No, no, okay. I see you have roughly 72 miles, lane miles of road in town, and I see I know what your uh, chapter 90 um, apportionment is. Um, also, the population. So I've I've done a little um, done a little homework, done a little research. Um, I've like I say, I know the area, so. Um, I don't have a lot of questions about what I see, but obviously it's the internal. I mean, my first steps, anyone's first steps that step into this position, the first thing you've got to do is um, gain acceptance. You've got to give respect. You've got to meet the crew, obviously. You've got to know the fleet. You've got to know all departments um, and their operation. And oh, by the way, I love your new police station. I still call it new, but I love your new. Compared to what it was next to the ATM machine, I love your new police station. So um, I believe, was Howie involved in that? That was before I was involved in town okay, politics. Okay, right. okay, gotcha. Oh. We're, we, we loved it until recently, and now there we have a problem with the insulation, and so we're dealing with that now. Okay, okay. Um, I have been involved in many, um, and I've completed the classes for um, Complete Streets. I did the classes uh, through CMRPC in Worcester. 
uh, and NIMA certified 1, 2, and 700. Um, familiar, very familiar with this, with this, with the CD, uh, CDBG. Uh, we have some ongoing, actually ongoing projects still in Spencer with that. Um, the shared streets uh, I've applied for and have been awarded grants for for those projects. Um, I think um, I don't think I know that I'm going to go back ten years ago. Um, I was given an award for um, um, joint um, equipment. And I actually came to Brookfield and asked if they wanted to jump in on that. So what we what we got was a bucket so truck. Far away from Brown. Not really, because one of the towns that is involved is Auburn. There's five towns involved, so it cost every town a thousand dollars a year in case of breakdown. But the truck was free, the chipper was free, free classes, everything. So it was very handy, as you know, as you as you folks know, with tree damage depending on the storm. Mm -hmm. So um, I have been involved in 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 those. So. I guess my, uh, well, as the saying goes, my hands are dirty and all that stuff, and I and I do enjoy it, and I do, um, um, I, I like to I like to feel that if I don't know the answer to a question, which I don't think, I know I don't know all the answers, but I I know where to go to get it. I'm very familiar with the um, administration and workers of what is now MassDOT, the state aid office. So um, actually, I've had a school in two towns. I bring the state aid people in to make sure that. That everybody, <clears throat> accountant, TA, if you will, um, and the public works folks and the treasurer know what the process is for Chapter 90 because that changes. Uh, it seems constant now, but it does change. So, so I have a good rapport with them because I've I've worked with them for a lot of years. Also, I was a liaison with MEMA when I was on the uh, on the turnpike. So, in case of a disaster, a blizzard, um, you know the ice storm, all of that stuff. So, you know, we had to report to the bunker and we had to give um, personnel and uh, equipment, if we could. Um, obviously, you take care of your hometown first before you go out, and that's the way I've always felt. So, well, I've been involved with them, so I am familiar with those folks. Is um, what is your um, what what is your what is your experience or opinion in um, <clears throat> or what's your what's your opinion of the availability of C <clears throat> excuse me CDL drivers um, speci specifically I know that we um, my my concern is that we might for plowing operations we may, we may need some we may need to bring in some people with CDLs I'm trying to think. You would need one other person. We would need if, if you chose an intern with this particular CDL. Okay, yeah. You would need yeah. one other. Yeah, the class, the, yeah. class B or higher. Yeah, the understanding is last Did winter. I, say that right? I believe that last winter we had four um, full time people on staff with uh, a class B CDL able to operate the uh, the larger equipment and and some of them were able to operate the loaders, and so. Right now, we have two of them are still here. One one retired, and uh, is, he's enjoying his retirement. And uh, and the uh, the superintendent has has moved on. So, if we, if we hired you, that would bring in one. And so the concern would be, what do we do about the the, the missing fourth? Is this is it a is a requirement in the posting that a person have a CDL and a hoisting? Yes. But have you, and, and other towns have done this because they're hard to find, to be completely honest, they're hard to find. Um, but it's a requirement, and what, because it's been so hard to find folks with those licenses, there is always a grace period. This is what we're gonna do. This is, we're gonna train you to operate this equipment. You're gonna take the test on your own. If you don't have a license within whatever the town decides, whatever the, the, the body we've, politic we've decides. Done that in, well, I, <coughs> other towns that I have, They've been in a year already, almost. Mm -hmm. All right. it's, but it's, so it's, this is a learning curve for everybody. 
Okay, understood. Okay. Yeah. But it makes sense that even though it's, it's preferred to have these licenses and required to, to retain the job, I don't see any reason why the board would discount a potential person who could say that they would, you know, I can be eligible for this for this by X date and take the exam. Let me ask you this, and if a person if their employment they continue employment would be contingent upon that. Okay. If a person come in with a CDL, mm -hmm. and also on the other side of that, a person was hired without a CDL, same pay grade? I don't believe that that is the way it's structured. Okay. So there's a pay range for the position. Okay. And I, be yeah, and I be <clears throat> believe the requirements for the position is a CDL, and so I think it would be, we have to make some changes and make a very specific decision to envision hiring someone without an expectation of them acquiring their CDL. It's like so. Well, that's what he's saying. They, there would be an expectation, but there's a grace period. Right. You, you have this much time to get it, and if you don't get a job, we won't. Mm -hmm. That's how it would be. Okay. So I, I, I heard him asking, would we, if we hired someone, <clears throat> I thought I heard him saying, would we hire someone, not require them to have a CDL, and have them at the same pay rate? Which. Is, is that what you're asking about? If, yeah, it was, if they would both start, if they, one had licenses, one didn't, would they both start at the same pay? That is not how we've done with other positions um, in similar situations, but we haven't had that at the highway. But when we hire police officers, if they have more experience, they start at the highway. They don't start at the bottom of the pay scale. Okay. So right. it's commensurate yeah. with their, with their okay. skill Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I would say that in, in that example where the only difference is one has a CDL and one doesn't, then I would think that one would merit, uh, one would merit less than the other because one is less qualified. It's like, and then. And I agree with that. I mean, and then I would say, and then it's, a, and we, and then I'm, I'm inexperienced in, in this area of municipal employment. Mm -hmm. I mean, the common sense person in me says, yeah, and when you get your license and you're equivalently qualified to the other person, we can talk about equivalently paying you. But it's like, I don't know, it's like, I, I asked Kelly, can we do this all the time? She said, absolutely not. I said, okay. all right, just ask him. Okay. <laughs> she, just she absolutely keeps, not does not come out anything like that when I say it. That's how I read it. Absolutely not. That's how, that's how I read it. Are there um, incentives um, for CDL such as do you pay for renewal? No, that is not um, something that I, I have seen in their budget. Okay. I, I don't. It's not called out in the budget, so I would I would have to ask we would have to ask down there to find out if that is something that is done. Okay. Yeah. But that's a. You know what? Hold on a minute. Let me, let me, I seem to remember there being a line item for. I know there's one for safety training. Mm -hmm. in it. Yeah, there is a safety line in the budget. One second. <coughs> you have the warrant right in front of you, correct? I do. Uh, I do. I don't know that I did not. I looked through the uh, the line items. I didn't see anything for licenses. Yeah, but it Does it mean it's could, not there, that could be paid just through the expenses line? It could be. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Because uh, I saw there's something. I don't know. Maybe it was an article for longevity. Was that passed? So high certificates, yes. DOT, physicals, and license recertification. That's what you pay for. That yes. Okay. Okay. But if someone came in off the street without a CDL or hoisting license, you would not, I'm, I'm assuming, you would not pay for that, that says initial. Is that certifications comma? Recertification. DOT, physicals, and license recertifications. Recert, correct. I'm, I'm agreeing with that. The yes. first one is certifications. The other one is recertifications. So it looks like it covers both. Ooh, yeah, okay. Would. Well, I would I would say it it sounds like the system is designed that there is some discretion. There is there is the discretion for us to decide to pay for the certification. I think we that's never that's not been an option we've had to okay. exercise right. in the past. Okay, understood. And ideally, we prefer to hire someone who's already has the licenses and can jump right in. Okay, it's not an ideal world. No, I know. The question more based on getting a class B operator right away more than. For um, the winter 
It was um, that, that that was part of the, the that was that, that was part Maybe. of the question, or, or and, and and I guess it, it kind of ties back to it's like the, the theoretical of what it's like. It's predicated on needing the, the on on how much do we need the four class B operator? It's like and that's that requires experience in plow operations that I don't have. How and long so, does it take to acquire that license? Under what is because now you have to, you can no longer, if I had a class, I have a class A, I had prior to two years ago in February, uh, I could sponsor someone to get them their license. Mm -hmm. Now they have to go to a driver's training school, such as the New England Driver's Training but it's Did that, is that in effect now? Yeah. Okay, All right. that's a tough it one. It has been, February 7th would be two years. Okay. Mm -hmm. 60 hours of counseling, 40 in field at the Okay. So they short the class B drivers, that's the whole premise. So you will yeah. need if you're the guy, you'll get yeah. some. Yeah. That's they do that. They do the testing, as you know, right in Sturbridge at the State Barn, and there's always a line of people out there being tested, always. So, before it was it was just you. You practice. You got hired by a company, and you you practiced, and they let you practice, uh, usually on your own time, during lunch or after work. They let you practice, and you made your appointment. You get your learner's permit, made your appointment, took the test. Um, that's how it was when when I got mine. But that was a long time ago. I didn't get it at Sears. I'm not that old. Do you have any more questions? I don't believe I do, sir. Um, uh, we always say that, but when we leave this in, oh, I should have asked that. No, I'm, I'm very good when I, when, I, when I walk away from someone like, oh, yeah. I should have asked yeah, that. I know, I know, I should have. Uh, no, like I said, uh, under, uh, not initially, but um, I stopped in. I did get a phone call about the, the opportunity. Um, so I did stop in, and um, Karen was very helpful. There was another uh, another woman there with her. I don't remember her name. Um, Probably Lois. Yeah, the one, is she going to Spencer to be on? No, that was Sarah. Tara. Sarah. Sarah, okay, okay. But they were both very helpful, so I, I actually enjoyed the visit. Um, so what I've Sarah seen. Sarah very, very nice. Yeah. Um, what I've seen, I was pleased with. I guess mm -hmm. that's, that's my point. And I, I let, um, let Karen know that I am retired. Um, I'll work as, as much as I can. Um, I'll certainly try to help in any way I can um, to get you through to the next step. To find because you need a permanent. It's not a it's not a part time position. You need a permanent full time person. Um, just wanted to let um, Karen know when I talked to her and also to you, the board, and and to you, Kelly, that um, I'm I'm certainly willing and able to to do what I can to help. Mm -hmm. That's all. Okay. All right. Um, to let you know, our our plan is that we are not planning to make a decision tonight. Mm -hmm. The uh, our next scheduled meeting is um, a week from tonight. And I'm planning to have this matter on the uh, on the agenda. And my ex my intent and expectation is that we will uh, the, the board will uh, will make a decision, and then a as to who our preferred candidate is. Okay. And then at that point we will re we will reach out to them and we will um, move the process forward from okay. there. Okay. So I just want I want to make sure you understand how, how we're doing. Oh, this I, do. I do. I do. Because I that's a, I know because I know whenever I'm applying, it's like what well, do I decide? What's the timeline? Well, you know, it's um, that's okay because you have to do what's best for you, obviously, and I certainly agree with that. Um, I'm not, um, I'm currently uh, still retired for the fourth time, so um, they Karen did ask when, when if, if they picked you, when could you start? I said, well, I'm here. So um, there was no giving notice. Some there was just I live ten minutes down the street, so just um, it is what it is. And if um, Mr. Taft, I thought I knew Mr. Taft from a. Is he related to the Tafts in Westbrook Field? I guess that's off. No, off it doesn't matter. Um, but I did. Um, that does actually. I saw his name on a few citizens' petitions as well. So, um, but whatever's best for the town. That's strictly all it is. I'm not here to um, overly sell myself, if you will. Just want you to know that um, I enjoy what I do. I like what I do. I love people, and I love working with people. Mm -hmm. So if I can help, I will. Okay. Thank you. If it's not to be, it's not to be, and that's okay. Then I'll run for selectman. I'll move to Brookfield and run for selectman next time. I can move. I'm up. I'm up. Yeah. <laughs> Three-year term, three-member board, right? Exactly. Okay. <clears throat> I just did, when I got elected, there was only a year and a half left on the term. Okay. Okay. And oh, somebody resigned? Yeah, two, we have two people resigned one move, simultaneously. Yeah, one resigned. Yeah, one resigned. Okay. Okay. They would have resigned within a couple of weeks. 
Okay. It's a tough. It's a tough spot. Being a select person to me is a tough spot. Being a TA is, a, is, is really a tough spot because you get it from all ends, and I've seen that. So, but um, I have to say that even though I've told everybody I never wanted to do that job after I did it for a year and it was successful, I kind of enjoyed it. So stepping in the Spencer with the town administrator, I don't know if you know Jeff Bridges. Okay, so stepping in and working for, for Jeff Bridges, the, the biggest part, and I told him to it, so I gotta stop being a town administrator. So, but it's good, it's good, all's, all's good. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll ask you, how big is the, uh, is the uh, highway department in Spencer? Spencer has, they were down one person, but they had, um, they had a tree warden within, they had uh, cemeteries within, um, um, I should say Parks and Rec. So they were at seven. Okay. But they were more of a DPW with, um, with cemetery and trees as, yes, as part of the department? Correct. Correct. They don't call it, I got, they don't like being called a DPW. Strictly okay. highway, I always call it DPW, but mm -hmm. they're, they're highway department and they have their own enterprise. And is your water department enterprise? No, it's not. It's not? No. Okay. When I was really young, um, we used to buy water off of you. Um, up at the, we used to fill the, the tanker. I used to drive the tanker mm -hmm. when the turnpike service area ran out of water. So we were back and forth buying water out of you. So it's, that's a tough spot to get to with, with a 48 foot tanker. But, mm -hmm. oh, but, but you always had good water. They, so they, I, I see tankers there every once in a while. So it's not enterprise. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I thought so as well. Hmm. Okay. My understanding is that there's, it's the month, the, the finances aren't, just aren't there. It's not a, it's not a, it's, I talked to the account about it when I was on the finance committee. So that's actually kind of off topic. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> all right. before we get into uh, okay, so, another right. off topic. And no city sewer? I'm sorry, what? No city sewer, all private no. systems? Okay. <clears throat> okay. I'll think of more stuff after I leave, right. but, okay, no, all right. very good. Well, thank you, Gary. No, thank you, it was really enjoyable. Nice meeting. Thank Good you very much. driving here today and it's like, it's like it's cold. It's like, and the roads are kind of wet. It's like, what's the temperature? 38 degrees. It's like, okay, nothing's going to freeze right now. But it's like, we do need a... Uh, well, we've had below freezing temperatures. Yes, I know. But I think the roads have been dry those times. Mm -hmm. So it was more the wet road plus the cold temperature that raised my concern. So, uh, let's see. Um, I think the uh, I think I think the the observation of the, uh, the the importance of the Class B licenses is something to consider. Yeah, I'm, I'm very glad that was brought to, to, to yes. your attention. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then um, the the his limitation of hours is a little concerning, but fundamentally, at full time he would last until about July. He can work 23 hours a week if he works 50, if he works oh, he's, he's, all the weeks. Okay. It's a calendar year. Right, but my, so my point was that if he, if he were so interested, he could get through 12, uh, he could get through 1,200 hours, um, and that would get him, at, that would, with him, that would get to July if he were full time, or he would have to work 24 hours a week to get through the whole year. Mm -hmm. And so, and part of that's understanding what the, what the need of the position is, and whether we would, whether we would need him there full time or not, um, or if you need him there for three yeah, and six convert, months, yeah, and then yeah, and then three hundred is a quarter of a year, and we are there's less than a quarter of a year left. So I would think that three hundred hours and forty hours would be seven and a half weeks. Yeah, and there's barely seven and a half weeks left in the year. Mm -hmm. So I mean, conversely, the Don, Don does not have any restrictions in that area. So, okay. is there, this is the entire agenda. 
Yeah, is, um, my just thought is since we're since we're in session, this would be a, uh, this would give us a chance to um, talk about anything while it's fresh. Otherwise, it would happen at our next meeting. Yeah, it would be fresh. That sounds good. All right. And seeing as there is nothing else on the agenda, motion to adjourn at seven fifty. Um, okay, I will second the motion. All in favor of adjourning at 7.50, please say aye. 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 Why would you need 40 hours a week? Just, uh, I'm sorry, what? Why would you need someone 40 hours a week? Just I don't. 